Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see how to create custom analytics rules to detect threats in Azure Sentinel. Once we have connected the data sources like we did in the previous videos wherein I connected TNS to Azure Sentinel, we can create custom rules that can search for specific criteria across the environment and generate incidents when the criteria are matched. And then we can further investigate those. So this video will help you to create custom alerts to detect threats with Azure Sentinel. So to start creating a customer custom analytics rule with a scheduled query, I will have to log on to the Azure portal and take it from there. I'm logged on to the portal and I will go to the Azure Sentinel. And when I click on the workspace, which is uh, selected for my Azure Sentinel, I would go to the analytics under configuration. And you will select create and select scheduled query rule from here. This one. This will open up the analytics rule wizard in the general tab will provide a unique name and a description so you can add any name that you want we'll say rule one this is a test rule in the tactic fields we can choose from among categories of attacks by which to classify the rule we can go for this how do you want to do you can do impact or you can select it zero as well you can select this severity and uh, status is enabled by default and if you don't want to run it immediately you can select disable and then the rule will be added to your active rules tab and then you can enable it later so let me do this now we'll go for defining the rule logic and uh, configuring the settings in the set rule logic tab you can either write a query directly in the rule query field or create the query in log analytics here right so you can type it here or you can do it later or create the and then you can copy and paste it here queries are written in Custo query language or Custo query language, which is KQL. You can learn for KQL concepts and queries on the Microsoft documentation. And in the rules simulation here, this chart would the uh, area to write and select test with current data. This chart shows the results of the 50 evaluations. Click a point in the chart. So I don't have anything configured as of now. That is why it is not showing you. And if you have written a query, you can select here to view the query results. And let's say you do it. And you can copy it, cancel it. You can paste this query here. Right. And you can do test with current data. It is simulating. So Azure Sentinel will show you a graph of the results the query would have generated over the last 50 times it would have ran. And according to the currently defined schedule. So if you modify the query, you can select again with, you can do this option again. And it will show you a graph I mean if I would have any data right so if you see that the query would trigger too many or too frequent alerts you can set a baseline in the alert threshold section so you can say okay run query after every five hours or let's say I do after every five minutes this is lap so it would not make a difference and uh, and you say that if it is generating too much of alert then you can say okay generate the alert if the value is this is greater than is fewer than is equal to is not equal to right 
and you can use the map entity section to link parameters from query results to Azure Sentinel recognized entities. These entities from the basis for further analysis including the grouping of alerts into incidents in the incident setting tab. So you can say okay which account, which host, which IP, which URL and you can add those options. So like uh, account slide owner you can add these into the existing query and then it will do this test with simulating of data it will run this query and would generate the simulation results and uh, if you will scroll down and you see query scheduling you can run the query as i mentioned before and it says set lookup data from last it would determine the time period of the data covered by the query. For example, it can query the past 10 minutes of data or the past 6 hours of data. Right? So, I'd say, okay, do query last 15 minutes of data also. And stop running query after an alert is generated. I would get gone off. And when you talk about event grouping, you can choose one of, you can group all events into a single alert. You can trigger an alert for each event. Currently, the number of alerts a rule can generate is capped at 20. If in a particular rule, event grouping is set to trigger an alert for each event and the rules query returns more than 20 events, each of the first 19 events will generate a unique alert and the 20th alert will summarize the entire set of returned events and now if you would configure the incident create setting in the incident settings it's still in a preview you can choose whether and how as your sentinel turns alerts into actionable incidents if this tab is left alone as your sentinel will create a single separate incident from each and every alert we can choose to have no incidents created or to group several alerts into a single incident by changing the settings in this tab. Let, let, so it says create incidents from alert triggered by this analytic rule. I can do disabled. Alert grouping is not enabled because when I disable it, so you can change it. Uh, so by default it is enabled. Then you can enable the grouping. Okay, list the group to alerts created with the selected time frame. If I, if in the previous five hours the same alert is triggered, and so I will group all those alerts into a single group right reopen closed matching incidents is disabled so for this i can go for the disabled and what would be my automated response so in the automated response we can select any playbooks we want to run automatically when an alert is generated so we will create this playbooks in a separate section though i know this is part of this but just let's park it uh, for some time now and we'll do it later. You review it. Validation is passed and now you can click on create. All right. So this is rule one saved. I mind you that this is still disabled, right? So if you would do this and you go here you can enable it from here you can edit the settings from here you can delete it you can create a duplicate alert as well and then you can change your settings all right and this is how you create a custom alert so i hope this was informative for all of you guys if you have any queries please mention them in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you have a good day ahead